Lord be with you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. As we focus our minds, it's easy, I'm sure you'll agree, for our minds to shoot off in many directions. And uh, we often find it hard to slow down, to remove all the clutter and to concentrate on the Lord. In the stillness of this place, this time, take from us, Lord, the stress and strain as we feel ourselves rest in your eternal love, in the everlasting arms. Then quietly, the small beginnings of praise well up as we remember what we have in Christ Jesus, that we have one who is with us, who guides and strengthens us, who holds us through every storm of life, who leads us to everlasting life. We confess that sometimes the storms we endure are of our own making, a foolish word, a thoughtless comment, a misguided action, a quick judgment. Then we have to live with the consequences and the guilt. Take all that stress from us too and replace it with your forgiveness and peace. Heavenly Father, in your hands we are safe and secure. We rejoice in your eternal love and all-sufficient grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join together in worship and song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
This morning's reading is from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of the Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come and, and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, please, please tell me, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? <clears throat> then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and travelled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. This morning's reading is from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the world I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember years ago when I uh, started attending church and uh, listening to sermons, uh, I remember this one particular story that, uh, that really took hold of my imagination. And uh, I want to begin by sharing it with you. You'll all have heard it before, but a good story is always worth telling again. Some years ago, a young man looking for work approached the foreman of the logging crew and asked him for a job. It depends, replied the foreman. Let's see you take this one down, pointing to a large tree. The young man 
stepped forward and skillfully felled the great tree. The foreman was impressed and exclaimed, You can start on Monday. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday rolled by. Thursday afternoon, the foreman approached the young lad and said, You can pick up your paycheck on the way out today. Startled, the young man asked, I thought you paid on Fridays. Normally we do, said the foreman, but we're letting you go today because you've fallen behind. Our daily charts show that you've dropped from first place on Monday to last place on Wednesday. But I'm a hard worker, the young man said. I arrive first, I leave last, and I've even worked through my coffee breaks. The foreman, sensing the boy's integrity, thought for a minute and then asked, Have you been sharpening your axe? The young man replied, Well, no, sir, I've been working too hard to take the time. I believe it's really true that we live in a world which truly lives by the maxim of justification by works. We glorify the stressful state and measure our worth by how busy we are. You've just got to gather a bunch of ministers in a room together and it's not long before they start talking about how many funerals they've conducted this month and how long it is since they've had a proper day off. We speak of this as if it was something to boast about, but the net result is that people become more and more stressed. The branch is further away from the vine and so produces plenty of foliage, but not always a lot of fruit. Churches do it too. We like to boast of how busy we are and how much we do. Yet the most fruitful thing a person can do is to remain close to the vine. The busier we get, the less time we have for prayer and the less fruitful we become. We are to depend on Christ, not vice versa. Time spent in prayer and worship isn't wasted, but the most fruitful thing we can do. There's no point in being frantically busy if we're busy doing the wrong things. So take time to graft into the vine. Discover his will and then you'll be more fruitful. Verse 5 in John's Gospel that we heard earlier says you are the branches. It's plural. Perhaps if we're stressed out by all we're doing, it's because we're doing the work of other branches. There is one vine, but many branches. We often say, if you want something done, ask a busy person. There's an element of truth in that. But in church, there must be a place for all the branches to bear fruit. Pruning by the gardener is not necessarily about punishment, but it may be an act of kindness to cut us back a little to allow others to flourish. If you read on to verses 10 and 11, it's no coincidence that John writes about joy and love. If we're far away from the vine and becoming stressed out, then the first casualties are joy and love. We lose all joy in our living because we're too worn out to enjoy anything. We lose love for the task we once enjoyed. We lose love for those we serve because we feel put upon. And we feel that they're not doing their bit as branches, but leaving it all to us. We may even lose our love for God, who we believe is calling us to do all this frantic activity. Taking time to graft into the vine and let his life flow through us, releases us from that burden and restores our love and our joy. How about you? Too busy to sharpen your axe? Prayer is the hone that gives you the sharp edge. Without prayer, the more work you do, the duller you'll get. We need to take time to stay sharp as we go about the work of building Christ's kingdom further in the world. Spend time with God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray together now. Jesus Christ, the true vine, in our need we come to you, in weakness, needing your strength. For we too easily become dry and lifeless without your life-giving spirit. Jesus Christ, the true vine, teach us to remain in you and so to find your life flowing in us, giving strength and vigour to our discipleship. And as we come closer to you, our lives are drawn closer to others. Our minds turn to images of violence we have seen on the news in places of fear and terror, to where people are at loggerheads over race, religion, land and power. Our thoughts turn to Christians living with persecution, who face daily danger simply for being linked to you. Father, prune back all that stands in the way of peace. Our thoughts turn to people in leadership and power who have decisions to make over the economy and people whose jobs and livelihood will be affected. We pray for our nation and its leaders. May changes and choices be shaped by the values of the kingdom. On our hearts are people in need in our church and community. Wherever hearts are breaking, bodies are failing. Minds are confused. Families are ruptured. Lord, come with your help and healing. Here too is your church gathered today. We give thanks for the saints of the past, and the fruit that they have borne in our community and beyond. Like them, help us to remain in you, that we may be fruitful and bring glory to your name. Through Jesus Christ, the true vine. Amen. Gathering our prayer and praise into one, we say together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today for our online worship and praise as we reflect on Jesus the vine and us as the branches going out into the world and bearing fruit for the sake of the kingdom of God. Some of us might think that we've got everything nailed down, we've got a plan, what's coming up. Uh, but actually, it's good sometimes to leave some space for the promptings of the Holy Spirit. There was a rabbi who lived in a village on the steeps of Russia. Every morning for 20 years, he crossed the village square to go and pray in the synagogue. And every morning, he was watched closely by a policeman who hated Jews. Finally, one morning, the policeman walked up to him and demanded to know where he was going. I don't know, said the rabbi. What do you mean, you don't know? For the past 20 years, I've seen you go to that synagogue across the square, and now you say you don't know. I'll teach you a lesson. And with that, he grabbed the old man by his beard and dragged him off to jail. As the policeman was turning the key on the prison cell, the rabbi looked at him with a twinkle in his eye and said, See what I mean? When I said, I didn't know. It's good to leave room for the unexpected and the interruption, because it may well be that that's the promptings of the Holy Spirit. May God go with you this week and beyond, and may you find time to sharpen that axe and leave space for God to lead you. May God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Look after yourselves. Good morning, everyone. 
Here we are in the church season between Easter and Pentecost. Um, my musical lectionaries tell me that as well as reflection, it's also a time of praise. So here's a praise one for you all. I'm sure you'll all know it. Angel voices ever ringing. As ever, a short introduction. <laughs> 